Hello, 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 broads. So I wanted to hop on here before the episode started because um, I know you're going to hear this in just a moment, but um, we actually pre-recorded this episode, was it a week and a half ago? Two weeks ago. I don't know. Time is odd right now, but it's a pre-recorded episode. And in one of our last episodes, we talked about how we are going to be discussing the Paris Hilton documentary in this episode. Um, And then we recorded this episode. But in the meantime, we were having broads slide into our DMs who wanted to give us information about the Provo School and schools like it, which is discussed in the Paris Hilton documentary. Um, In fact, we were getting DMs from broads who... Uh, knew a lot of information about schools like Provo uh, and Provo itself. Also, broads who had worked at these types of places had firsthand experience. Um, And in this episode, Becca and I, it's at the end of the episode, but we're chatting, aka just rambling, (laughs) about um, what we purely saw on the Paris Hilton documentary, speculating about certain things, throwing around thoughts and ideas, By no means are we experts because this is not something that we've studied nor have we experienced. Um, But after receiving messages from broads and diving into it more ourselves after recording this episode, um, we feel like it would be really important to have a full episode discussing schools like Provo um, and other schools like it, Um, especially talking about breaking code silence, which is talked about in the Paris Hilton documentary. It's the movement organized by a network of survivors and activists to raise awareness of the abuses in the troubled teen industry. This is obviously something that is super important and really needs to be discussed, um, especially discussed by people who are experts in the field or people who have experienced this, um, which is not Becca and myself. So we feel like it would be good to have a full episode um, aside from what you'll just hear again later in this episode, which is us rambling about us speculating certain things purely from what we saw from the documentary. Um, But yeah, let us know if that's something that you all would be interested in hearing. Um, Like I said, I think it would be very important and something that really needs to get out there. Anyways. Love you broad so much. Oh, wait, 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 wait. While I have you here, please, if you have not, register right now to vote. Check to see if you're registered to vote. And then if you are, please vote. This year more than ever, it is very important. So please register. In the episode notes, we're going to put easy ways for you to register, to check if you're registered, and all that. So, please. All right, that's all. Now let's get into the episode. And welcome to another episode of Chatty Broads with Becca and Jess. Well, good morning, bitch. Well, good morning, bitch and bros. <laughs> you guys, we are recording this one early in the a.m. I don't think, have we ever recorded this early? It's, it's only like, eight. It's only like eight in the morning. It's five. I know, but to like get ready, get the kiddos ready, you drove here. Oh. Like, it's an early, it's an early morning. I, do you like, are you a morning person or a night person? Um, I am or a both. Are you just a life person? <laughs> always happy and I'm always good to go um no I like working better in the morning I like mornings yeah but I like hanging out at night so I'm not like one of those ones who when I'd have slumber parties that I'd get up in the morning and be like what's going on friends mm-hmm. like if you're just my friend and we're hanging out I'm not speaking to you until like 10 in the morning okay but I, I feel you like you'd be one of those people where you'd get up at like six in the morning to study for a test that you've procrastinated on not stay up all night Absolutely. Same. Yeah, because I'm like, if I'm staying up so, so late, and I'm just staring at it, I know I'm going to forget it the next morning. So it's like, I'd rather get up early and look like I'm about, like, on death's door. Now I get very dark circles under my Uh, eyes. Very dark circles. mm. Puffy or just dark circles? Um, well, it depends. If mama was drinking the night before, Mm. you know very easily because I'm puffed. I'm puffed daddy. Oh, that's the (laughs) worst. Puff mommy. Do you get dark circles? I feel like I never see you with dark circles. Mm. No, but I just flashed back to this one really specific memory when I worked at this Italian restaurant in Fresno called De Chico's. Shout out. This guy <laughs> came in and it was so weird. He goes, are you half? He goes, are you? Are you? He was like probably in his like 50s or 60s. And he's like, are you? 
half Mexican, half like Eastern European, which is exactly what I am. Okay. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, oh man, if I was in my 20s, I would take you around the world. My, my ex-wife, she was half Mexican and half Polish and she would wake up with those dark circles around <laughs> her eyes every morning. You know, do you ever wake up with those dark circles around your eyes? And I was like, uh, I guess sometimes. And he was like into that? I don't know. I mean. But he's like, I'll t- take you around the world. <laughs> You're like, okay. Like, What's stopping you now, Zaddy? <laughs> Excuse me, Zaddy. But I do, I I do, do like, <laughs> I like when guys have dark circles. Like Pete Davidson? Yes. I've actually been noticing that I am very sexually attracted to the dark circle, but I think it's like more tortured of a. tortured artist. Yeah, I think it's more of a like, why, why don't you sleep? And I'm curious now. I think I don't really get dark circles, but I do get really puffy. Do you? Randomly. Huh. Wait, okay, so you're half, now I have to know, you're, what, what, I know you're half Um, Mexican, but you're half Eastern European? What's your other half? Lithuanian? Well, not full half, but, like, a big chunk is, is Lithuanian. Really? Yeah, aren't you Lithuanian? We've already talked about this. No. Oh, wait, no, someone else is. I can't remember who, one of my friends is Lithuanian, but yeah. Oh, my God. Like, Lithuanian, Polish. That feels like, I don't know. Exotic. Very exotic. (laughs) I mean, I'd like to go to Lithuania someday. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm like German, Lithuanian, Polish. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Wow, I had no idea. So I, I again need to take me and Jess both have twenty three and me or ninety nine. What you know? What what's that? Uh, yeah, twenty three and me. Yeah, we both have those kits. We just haven't. We done haven't them. taken them, and I don't okay. know why. I feel like should we just let's should we do, do it this week? We'll do it this week, and we'll figure out, and then we can talk about it. Yeah, because I I I like a hundred percent know my like somewhat near ancestry because okay. it, it's not very it's pretty much the same yeah i mean my great grandma was from lithuania so yeah like, my mom was from switzerland mm. like like half of my family is swiss and half of my family is irish but well, who knows maybe they immigrated from somewhere to switzerland that's like, true you never my know. uncle took it and he said that we have some egyptian in us oh it's like 0.5 percent it's very minimal but <laughs> i'll take it because i was just like Swiss and Irish. <laughs> it's just like Europe. Cool. Swiss is pretty cool. Swiss is cool. We, you know, people, but people always assume when they hear Swiss, they always go, well, you don't have blonde hair and blue eyes. I'm like, that's Swedish motherfucker, mm. not Swiss. Mm. Swiss is olive skin and dark hair. That's mm-hmm. typically what we look like. I, well, I guess depending on what part of Swiss we're from, but. I was in Costa Rica with a girl who was from Switzerland and she did, was blonde with blue eyes, but she was. So motherfucking tan. Like, yeah. way tanner than I got that summer. It was crazy. Yeah, I considering that I am, like, a lot, that there, there's a chunk of Irish in me, when I am in the sun, I will get tan very quickly. You definitely do. And I've I noticed. Used, but I've, you know, I'm obviously the smoke outside. I am now a cave dweller. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the pandemic, the smoke. After I had Ember, I was inside a lot, which is sad because as a mother, I probably should be taking her out in the sun more. But she burns so easily. I know she. That girl's pale. <laughs> that chick is. Does pale. does um does Evan burn really easily? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he gets tan, but he always every time he gets tan, he burns. And you, oh my god, what the Maybe complaining? The oh, it's just like it's one of those things. The man is so tough, and he never complains about anything. When he's when he burns, it's just like. Dear God, no. I won't stop hearing about it for like three weeks. Embarrassing. It's horrible. Embarrassing. I Embarrassing. Um, also, for those watching the YouTube video, I like threw this dress, because it's coming from my in-laws, I threw this dress in the bag. It's the only dress I have. And I am popping out of it. It's just my gigantic tits. I was going to say, they but, look great. Uh, but yeah, if anyone's seen all this puckering going on, I mean, just, I'm going to try to remain do have, a little modest with my sweater on. We are recording later with Rob Bell and his son, so... <laughs> The tits will be on display. Hello, (laughs) Bells. I'm going to unpop a few buttons. Oh, speak. A little wardrobe malfunction. Speaking of, speaking of, we should definitely say that it is currently the 21st. Oh, yeah, timestamp. We got a timestamp, but it is Monday the 21st, and this is not coming out until, like, what, we're in October? No. No, the Tuesday 29th. the 29th, yeah. 29th. But practically, but um Jesus. Wow. We're going to be not in town, so we're recording ahead of time. Yeah. So in case, you know, the I mean at this point honestly, there could have been a giant asteroid that's hit the earth on one side of it, maybe 
we're all gone in California. Maybe we've broken off because of the big one. <laughs> you know Bless what? you. But all that matters to me right now is Paris Hilton. That's obviously. all that. That's all that matters to me. Truly, everything else is irrelevant. I mean, I can't stop thinking about it. So um. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Because I definitely want to cover the Paris Hilton documentary. So should we go over some like? Uh, you said you had some tea left over from last week. Yeah, I have some tea. I have some some pop culture tea that we can talk about. Again, we are recording this ahead of time, so I'm sure there's Bachelor Nation news out at this point. I'm sure. But we'll get to that next week. Um, in the meantime, there are some fun pop culture things. Okay, I don't know. I know that you are a listener slash watcher of the H3 podcast. Oh, I knew I was <laughs> waiting for you to bring this up because I was listening to it this morning and I was going to bring it up and then I was like, oh, is this going to be irrelevant on the 29th? Who cares? Who cares? Because I this is not irrelevant to me because this actually really tweaked me. Oh, it is a big issue. This is issues of the day. Mom is tweaked. I've been following. Okay. I've been following. Broads, H3 podcast, if you don't know... It's been around for quite some time. And a long time ago. And it's really big, okay? It's a huge podcast. Um, it's a husband and wife duo. Yes, and they have a... Sh- like, specifically, she started this clothing... They started a clothing company together called Teddy Fresh. The son's name's Theodore. And yeah. His name's Teddy, so it's... It's so it's cute. cute. And she is, like, a very... Like, she designs dope stuff. Like, mm-hmm. she's really cool. And so... I fucking love them, by the way. Please have me on the podcast someday. <laughs> be on the podcast. And Eli, love you both. <laughs> yeah, you've definitely been into H3. Yeah, You're I a huge they're... H3 fan. Yeah, I... I love it. I'm sure some people hate it, but I love it. And I was just listening. They just started a podcast with Trish Paytas. Yes. Ethan did. And Can you I've believe? Been listening. It's so ridiculous, and I'm obsessed. Oh, yeah. Anyway. I definitely listened to the first episode. <laughs> um, but, the, okay, so then... Uh, this, By the way, their, hood, their line started in 2017. Their clothing line, yes. And they put out a hoodie that is very... It's really cool, and it's very specific looking. It's color blocked, so like... The hood is um, uh, like a light, uh, yell- like a canary yellow, and then one sleeve is like minty green, another sleeve is baby pink, the main part is like baby blue. It's very specific, okay? Yeah. And it's been around, again, t- since 2017, and the line's done really well. Like, f- like famous TikTokers have been wearing it. People are spotted out in it's, this hoodie. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty iconic. This is one of the first hoodies to come out, too, in 2017. Yes. And you've probably seen it. I mean, yeah, it's... It's got like a, yeah, it's like periwinkle, pink, aqua, and like, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's very specific looking. Now, a few days ago, James Charles, who, you know, is pretty big. <laughs> um, he's fucking huge. Like, yeah, H3 is pretty big. They've got like a couple million followers. I mean, but James Charles. James Charles has like what, like 30 million on YouTube or something insane like yeah, that? Yeah, and 22 on Instagram. Well, I'm talking about just Instagram, sorry. Oh, H3 okay. actually has a, a lot of subscribers. But, I mean, to give you some context, like, Kim Kardashian posted on Instagram with his new merch. Yes. So, James Charles now puts out a new line of merch, announces it, and his main, like, his merch is almost carbon copy. We're talking about, okay, so the, some of the James Charles stands have been like, oh, H3 didn't, or Teddy Fresh didn't invent color blocking. But we're talking about literally side by side, the exact same, we're talking yellow hood, yellow drawstrings, yellow cuffs. Yes. Like aqua, aqua right sleeve, pink left sleeve, it's, and like periwinkle middle. Like it's, it's the same thing. It's, as identical as it's going to get without it being literally the like me buying the exact hoodie and just oh, yeah. putting a James Charles tag on it. Same. Did you see this one too? Tag. There's two of them. There's this one. Look, this one is the exact yes. same also. So it's not just it's not just one piece of their collection that he's like fully copying. It's a couple pieces. Now, again, we're talking H3, which is already like they're big, but like you were saying, Becca, Kimmy K is posting with it. Yeah, Charlie D'Amelio is posting with it. Like, he, like James Charles is gonna make so much money off of this hoodie. It's insane because it's a dope hoodie too. So, okay, from H three, like they're saying, yes, we have a decent sized platform. But a good comparison would be, um, a good comparison would be something like. Uh, If you put out, like, your clothing line, let's just say, you put your clothing line out, and then someone who is, I don't know, um, 
Kardashian, I mean, maybe. That's like way bigger. Like, I, I, I'm thinking like relative to the size, it would be like... I can't think of a that's good a tough, comparison. That's a tough one. Paris Hilton. Okay, sure, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. a good comparison, okay. right? Because Paris Hilton is quite point, a bit smaller like, at, than yeah. Kim Kardashian. So it's if you put your clothing line out and then Paris, and you, you know, you have a substantial following, but Paris Hilton's a lot bigger. She puts out the exact same clothing line as you. You'd be like... Or like two pieces were exact color like placement. exact, yes. Yeah. That would be an issue. Well, this is even where it gets even crazier. Are we going to talk texts? We're going to talk receipts. We are going to talk receipts in the DMs, baby. Well, so like, okay, so basically, Ethan, who's Ela's husband, like DM'd, because they're both YouTubers, you know, so they DM'd James Charles and was like, yo, look, this isn't, this is before putting anything on the internet. Like, check out. Ethan hadn't said anything, no. nothing on and Twitter. And it was like, yeah. hey, basically, this is a little too close for comfort. Like, look at these yeah, two. Yeah, like, They're excuse me. <laughs> exact copies. And he didn't accuse James Charles of anything. He was, he brought up, I believe, uh, his, like, team of designers. It's like, it looks like potentially someone sure, from Sure, because he knows it's not exact. It's not as if James Charles is, like, on the internet. And it's He's like, like ooh, sketching. Kenny Fresh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's sketching. He's like, love this. <laughs> He's not dripping sweat <laughs> over his art book every night being like, this is what t- hoodie I want to design. No, which ironically, it was like, that was, um, Ela was showing how she does her process, and she literally, like, since she started the clothing line, she literally just, like, sketches out the colors with markers. That's because is a clothing designer, which is why this actually gets me mm. hot, hot heated, okay? Mm. Because... And it's, like, something she created, like, yes, from the ground up. it's her up. baby. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, Ethan basically was like, yeah, your design... It looks like your designers created something that was really yes, similar. Yes, very similar. So, he wasn't being... He was being very kind. It wasn't being shady. Well, so then, after... After um, James Charles responded, then basically he felt like it was condescending and and dismissive. And then that's why he took to the Internet to be like, yo, let's talk about this. And then James Charles was like, I told you that, like, I asked you what you wanted me to do and you, like, never responded. Well, it's not exactly what happened. In the receipts, James Charles says, oof, looking closer at the screenshot you just sent me, I will give you the heads up that one of the color colorways we're doing is actually an exact copy of the purple tan pink and teal <laughs> hoodie you guys have so upside this is down on, smiley face so this is on top of ethan by the way <laughs> calling out that the one that was all pastelli looking was the copy he's saying oof by the way also looks like there's another one that's coming out that's identical <laughs> is actually an exact copy upside down smiley face I designed the pastel one. That's the other one that looks exactly like the other one. Okay, so he claims that he designed the pastel one. I designed the pastel one based on the Nike hoodie. Okay, so also... So you're ripping off Nike, (laughs) which I mean, I'm like... (laughs) But like, okay, it's another unoriginal... What? Yeah. You're just... Okay, whatever. And the Nike hoodie came out after... H3s, maybe? I don't, I don't know. know. But my design Should team pitched that. me a bunch of colorways once we decided on doing a color block collection. And I liked that one and said, yes, once again, not being familiar with your brand or hoodie. Regardless, we don't have the same fan base or demographic, so there's really no competition here. Lies. <laughs> All I can tell you is that <laughs> I've never guess. shopped on your website before, so I did not copy your brand. You don't have to go on their website to, like, see this hoodie, like you were saying, no. first of all. And I and I fully believe, I believe in my heart, that James Charles didn't necessarily know that that hoodie he was seeing out and about was Teddy Fresh, I, H3's. I know they YouTubers. But he, yeah. wa- I mean, you, you're seeing I mean, yeah, seeing who's going to, who's going to look, like, go on a website and be like, I'm going to do that exact one from this other YouTuber's brand. No, I, mean, I don't that's think like that he's ridiculous, specifically, right? like, that he knew that it was Teddy Fresh. But I also don't believe that he doesn't know about H3. Because let's be let's be straight. If you don't know about H3 broads, H3 covers pop culture. Well, he didn't say he didn't say he wasn't familiar. He said he did say specifically not being familiar with your brand or hoodie. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. that which seems plausible. Because I was just that's like, plausible. that's plausible. Because I was like, you if you're if you're in pop culture, you know about H three. Okay, but regardless, we don't have the same fan base or demographic, so there's really no competition here. Yeah, like you said, lies. That's a lie because again, H three has on the Shane Dawson's, the Trisha Paytas, the Jeffrey Stars. Like they have on YouTubers, TikTok stars, like. Plus, it doesn't matter. That's doesn't like, matter. okay, so that's, that's like exactly your, that's like Paris Hilton saying to me, like, we don't have the same 
fan base or demographic. Yeah, so there's she's no like, competition. Bachelor followers do it's not like, follow me. That's not, it's like one, not true, and two, that's fucking irrelevant. You, of course, you, because especially the Teddy Fresh uh, sweatshirt has, like, reached now beyond, I think, even their... I mean, aside from the moral standpoint of it all, right. it's reached past that. You hope, when you're a designer, especially like Ela, who's actually like sketching out this design, you hope that your brand reaches outside of your podcast or your fandom. Absolutely. You're making it for everyone. When Beck and I put out our line of vodka and wine, <laughs> it is for the masses. It is not just for the broads. Of course, it starts yeah. with the broad squad. But we hope to proselytize this yes. and make it a worldwide name. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> okay. Well, broads, nothing makes your space yours like a wall full of happy memories and personal touches. With FrameBridge, it's never been easier or more affordable to frame your favorite things without ever leaving your home. Yes, you can add a gallery wall to your home office or send the perfect gift to friends and family with those holidays coming up. Um, from art prints and diplomas to the photos sitting on your phone that you never know what to do with, you can FrameBridge just about any thing. People always told me to enjoy every moment with my daughter when she was a baby because before you know it, they aren't babies anymore. And recently when I've been looking at her and she's all grown, it has been hitting home. So I know I have to make it a priority to frame special moments of my family because time goes faster than we want to admit. And now that I have these moments that I have them printed and framed, they're going to be with me for forever. Um, FrameBridge makes it so easy to make sure special moments with your loved ones are never forgotten. Just go to framebridge.com to upload your photo, preview your item online with dozens of frame styles and gallery wall layouts. And once you've decided, the experts of FrameBridge will deliver your piece directly to your door, ready to hang. And like I said, the holidays are coming up. I cannot believe it is already fall, October. This is wild perfect perfect gift through framebridge so get started today frame your photos or send someone the perfect gift go to framebridge.com and use promo code chatty to save an additional 15 percent off your first order again that's framebridge.com promo code chatty framebridge.com promo code chatty well like i said it's officially a uh, fall it's officially fall broads. It's my favorite time of year for so many reasons. One of which is that it's all about that cozy and being curled up in your home, drinking apple cider, uh, maybe by a fire. And nothing makes me feel cozier than feeling cozy and classic in my space. And that's where I turn to Jenny Kane. I mean, Jenny Kane is for all seasons, really. Jenny Kane, you think California casual with elevated staples. We are talking chic, clean, Pinterest, home, and inspo goals. And Jenny Kane carries not only for the home, but also clothing, shoes, and accessories as well. But like I said, having a comfortable, cozy items is essential any time of year. And that's why you got to opt for Jenny Kane with timeless neutrals and classic styles and the quality. Hello. Uh, I recently just added some Jenny Kane pillows to my life. And let's say my couch just went up a few levels in coziness, quality, and chicness forever. Uh, next, I will be purchasing one of those incredible hemp rugs that they have because I want something timeless that I won't want to swap in six months because my tastes have changed. And living with Jenny Kane makes me feel like I'm living in this quaint boutique hotel in Santa Barbara. So I obviously want that in my life for forever. And I know I talked about this last time, but, uh, when Ember was a baby, that was, uh, my big thing is I wanted her to have a Jenny Kane nursery and it was the most incredible, beautiful space ever and she by far had the nicest room in the house i wanted to sleep in her room every night i was like i can't do with my bedroom can't do my bedroom anymore i gotta sleep in the baby's room because it's all sorts of jenny kane and again broads just go onto their site because you also won't want to miss those cashmere sweaters and mules my goodness is the only correct way to describe so you can go to JennyKane.com and get 20% off your first order when you use code CHATTY at checkout. That's spelled J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com. That's JennyKane.com. Get 20% off your first order when you use promo code CHATTY at checkout. JennyKane.com, promo code CHATTY.
<laughs> okay, and then another thing that is a little crazy about this. So, yeah, I, I just find that whole argument so ridiculous. Yes. But here's what makes him even more of a fucking hypocrite. Yeah. I don't know if you saw this. Yes, I did. Yes. So then Ethan posted on Twitter a screenshot of basically James Charles throwing a fit because Wet n Wild, mm -hmm. another makeup brand, because you know James Charles has his makeup line, yes. did a very similar palette with, well, actually, yeah, with really similar colors and really similar layouts. It's it's very similar. Which is ironic because it's the same issue. It's, it's about colors and placement. Exactly. And it's about as close. In fact... Yeah. The, the sweatshirt might be even closer. I, I know. I'm looking at it. I'm like, mm. yeah. So it's very close. And James Charles had this whole essay where he's like, the T is that knockoffs from low quality brands will always exist in the makeup industry, blah, 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 blah. It's disappointing to say the least. I don't own any colors and certainly wasn't the first to create a rainbow palette. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I spent over a year conceptualizing, designing, selecting colors and formulas, shooting photos, working on music, blah, blah, blah. Rainbow palette had been done before. This new palette is not just a rainbow palette. It's an exact low quality, cheap knockoff and a sad ploy to capitalize on cancel culture. I'll not pretend. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so it has a whole thing about he like. He was very upset about I it. I put which, in so much energy and effort. Which rightly so. Right. So he, of all people, should understand how it feels when something you've worked on for years is ripped off. So don't send an oof. You know what I'm saying? Upside down sign of the base. Well, looks like it's the same one. No big deal though. Don't have the same fan like, base or demographic. What, what are you gonna do about it? Like I understand in the situation, granted, your product is out, everything is being printed, you're kind of like Oh, then shit. stop production. What am I supposed to do? Or at least yes, I agree. Just say like whatever's made is made. Just send out a statement and be like, I'm so sorry, this was an oversight somehow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, and then just make different merch. Yeah. Or like, and you could still do the color blocking, just discontinue the ones that are direct ripoffs of, of Teddy, Teddy Fresh. Fresh. Yeah. And that would be very impressive. If anything, at least have some sort of acknowledgement of something. Like, I, I'm just surprised right now because I would think that James Charles would be on his best behavior because it was only a year and a half ago no less a year ago that the whole cancellation of james charles happened now since then he has had a resurgence because things have come out that certain things weren't true da 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 and now he's one of the only people who is currently youtubing trisha paytas and james charles are like the only two people actually youtubing during this quarantine like everyone else has gone silent why? Like no, and Logan Paul. That's the other one who I noticed. Well, first of all, some of some people have been canceled, and second, I think some people are just like, like certain people. For instance, like a Tana, um, yeah, uh, Tana. I was, Manjo, yeah, whatever. I, don't know to say it. I always mess up her name. Um, she hasn't technically been canceled, but there's been numerous numerous shit that's almost canceled her, which. Yeah, that's been drama that's been going on. So she just keeps hopping on and making these like apology videos on Instagram, but then not actually posting on her on her YouTube. Huh. And so James Charles is one of the only ones out there right now who's like majorly kicking ass and putting out videos constantly through quarantine and getting more and more followers every second wow. and regaining his army. I would just think that <laughs> his he, sisters, his sisters, <laughs> I would think that he would be like on his best behavior. And I will be honest with you. I would like to put in this specific episode title something about James Charles stealing, but I'm scared of his fans. <laughs> Rods, it's imperative now more than ever. You leave the, the you hit that, smash that five star button. Because we're about to get a lot of one Before stars. Before the James stands, come for us, the sisters. <laughs> the, sisters. the sisters are but after I, us. But I have been enjoying James's content lately, mm. which also is one of those things. Like, I have been enjoying his videos. One of those moments where I was like, Fuck James, why? I just can't I imagine responding like that personally. I would yes. just, I would just be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Like we already have this merch, and I'm sure that you know they would understand being like, this merch is already created, but I'm going to discontinue further production of these specific ones that are exact copies. That seems extremely can reasonable. You, can to you me. imagine how how much your anxiety would go through the roof if you got a message from someone, especially someone like who has a 
valid like a large following being I, like you full like this is fully ripped off i mean my stomach i follow would drop. diet prada even if there was like a tiny brand i would still be like oh. oh my fucking god well let me make something clear a tiny brand i would feel like i'm the i would feel like the worst person in the world a yeah. bigger name i would be scared for my life <laughs> Totally. You know but what I mean? even I would be scared that the small brand would like, yeah, screenshot and yeah, submit to someone. And but I, would, I would just be like, I'm a horrible person. Even, and like I said, I don't think it's that James specifically ripped off Teddy Fresh, but I do believe when you, when you see something, listen, it happens with songwriters all the time. Songwriters all the time, it's like, how many hooks can you make? Right. right? So you're in the studio, right. you're trying to come up with songs constantly, you've been hearing a song in the background a lot, you have no idea who it is, but then you rip it off. And there's a difference between taking like tiny little hooks here and there and like, because no music really is new. No. Um, but when it's a specific, I remember like Coldplay stole, like completely stole a song from a small artist. And when you listen to them side by side, it is like, an, it's identical. Which song? I forget which one. I'm gonna have to look it up. But it's wild. Okay. And they had, I believe they had like major, they had to pay out some serious cash. So ultimately that person won because their song wouldn't have gotten famous. But if they would have bought the song from them, right. Coldplay could have bought the song from them and then they would have been making tons of residuals right. and they would have become good, like well-known songwriters and all this stuff. But I don't know. And I don't know. I, I think I think my only reaction to this whole thing is that, whoops, is that I am going to um, immediately go and purchase a Teddy Fresh sweatshirt. They're really cute. They're so cute. I'm trying not to buy new, but I've been, I literally have some saved on Poshmark that I've been like, do I purchase? They're cute. Just in support. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> I know. I actually wonder how it's doing for T- Teddy Fresh brand. They're also mm-hmm. way cuter than James Charles merch. James Charles mm-hmm. merch. If he's going to talk about cheap knockoffs with wet and wild, it looks like a cheap knockoff. Mm-hmm. Preach it. Unfortunately. Preach it, sister. <laughs> Sisters. <laughs> Well, sisters versus broads. Sisters versus broads. How does one make their S's so sharp? I don't like know, James but I the, the man speaks faster, truly, than anyone I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> and I'm so jealous. Like, I wish I could speak that quickly. I think that's the future. Like, sometimes me and my yeah. sister are talking on the phone and we're talking like this. And I, do, I feel like we're talking in fast forward motion. Yes. And I feel like the next generation will talk doubly. Because fast. you have to keep people's attention. So you have to speak quickly. Or. <laughs> you have to compete with the computer. Do you have to speak so slowly? Absolutely not. That makes me want to stab <laughs> myself. I hate that. <laughs> Oh, my God. Don't you like that every once in a while, though, when you're listening to, like, a motivational, like, speech and the person's, like, speaking very quickly and then all of a sudden they stop? Oh, yeah. That's, like, a technical skill, you know? Yeah. They're like, and we as a generation need to care. (laughs) You heard me. That's right. We need to care. It's also, like, a pastor thing, you know? Yes. Yes. Jesus loves you. (laughs) Think of your best youth group, um, like youth pastor. The cadence. Line. Yeah. My best youth yeah, pastor Yeah, give, give a youth pastor line. Is. <laughs> I'm so ready. <laughs> and then the, yeah, well, you gotta, you gotta, it has to be, it has to be, it has to be quick. It has to be quick, right? And in the end, it's not about you. It's not about you. You can feel it. It's all around. It's not about you. You can feel selfish. You can feel sinful. All those things. You are. You are sinful. But what I need you to know is that it doesn't matter. He sees you. He accepts you. He welcomes you into his And windows. I would call upon <laughs> your name. <laughs> that was so good. Thank you. I loved that. And the stammering. And, and then the thing is. And it doesn't matter how you feel. If you feel low, if you are sunken down, you might be tired, you might be exhausted. It's okay. He sees you. I love it. It gets me hooked in every single time. If I'm flipping through Insta and all of a sudden I hit like a pasture, I'm sucked in and I'm just like, yes, (laughs) I believe it all. 
every time. <laughs> Gets me. You're very vulnerable. Same to a thing cult. with worship songs. Worship oh, songs. I like worship. Songs. I love worship songs. I still listen constantly. I'm loving the TikToks with the worship songs. Oh, it makes me the, cry. They're... It's just like I'm so vulnerable. Like I, if I'm like driving and I'm, I'm like screaming, like you know, a song full of vulgarities, and all of a sudden, like oceans hits. I'm oh. just like I, my hands are raised. I am a believer. What What's like the the worship band you're like the most of a sucker for? Um, well, it's not necessarily a band. It's like, it's numerous songs for me. Okay. But there is an artist who, and I always forget his actual name, but there is an artist who, I, who came up like right when I was kind of not going to church anymore, mm-hmm. who I was like, I think maybe I'm a Christian again because, <laughs> because he was so good. <laughs> it's going to bug me. My <laughs> favorite yeah, is, yeah, what's um, yours? I'm a sucker for Third Day. My dad used to play Third Day all oh the time when God. I was a kid. And You're their a Third albums, Day queen? Their albums, their, fir- their early albums, like in 1993, they're so good. Oh, I love them. so good. Yeah. Um, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, that one. That song that makes that one's, me sob every time. That one's still. heavy. I mean, I've always liked, I like the heavy always. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to... Think. My, my, um, my... Oh, no, my favorite third one is... Third day one my is My internet's like, just, like, not working now, so, yeah. <laughs> it's like... Thought that I was all alone, broken and afraid, but you were there for me. Yes, you were there for me. It's, like, one of the really early ones. I don't know if I know that one. Well, I'm not it's sure. Good. Well, now I'm, I can't, I can't find the Tragic. artist. Tragic. Do you remember what the song name is called? I can look it up for you. Um, no, because <laughs> I don't remember anything. I don't remember names of any, like, of any, um, worship songs. Uh, I just know that recently this guy put a song out with Phil Wickham. Oh. Um. I'll look that. Isn't that the guy from, uh, American Idol? No. Phil never Wickham? Mind. No. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> oh. Chris Quilalala. I don't know how to say his name. <laughs> how do you spell that? It's, it's C-H-R-I-S, and then it's uh, Q-U-I-L-I-L-A. Quilala. Yeah. Literally. And show me and show me the songs. You cannot be stopped because of your love. Because of your love, literally. I will be bumping it in the car. It trashes me. I listened to Can't it two to listen. days ago and like wept on the floor. Evan walked in and was like, what are you crying about? I was like, this worship song, I can't handle it at all. I'm always still, I mean, obviously Reliant K, although that's not worship, that's not a worship band. They're yeah. just like Christian. We folk. were so, I was so conservative. My parents were growing up that I couldn't listen to Reliant K. That's how conservative it was. You know what's weird? My parents did not ever enforce music restrictions. Oh, that's wonderful. Like I couldn't like bump Nelly around the house. But, like, they weren't checking up on what CDs I was listening to yeah, or what I was downloading on LimeWire. I was, my, the music was strict in my house. Interesting. Yeah. And I remember being, um, I think, in second grade and the Barbie Girl record came out, I Aqua. Love Barbie Girl. But that didn't hit for me. There was a song on there <laughs> <laughs> that was. I didn't slap. Oh, my love, I wish I were the candy man. And oh, no. Which, but then my parents were like, it's drugs. And they heard me listening to it and I was like, I was uh, in trouble for like two weeks. I was wow. grounded because I, I like my one, my one of my friends like burnt the CD and I like mm. snuck it and they thought I was listening to I think Adventures in Odyssey and yet here I was listening to Aqua. Bitch, <laughs> Adventures in Odyssey, stop. That shit hit different. Adventures in Odyssey is so fucking good. Mr. Whitaker is a G and I'm just, uh, that's just a fact. Like he is the OG Mr. Whitaker. Uh, Eugene. <laughs> What a little nerd. I had the hots for Rodney for some Rathbone. Reason. Oh my god, the Rathbones. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Vengeance Odyssey was so good. Um, I had some of them on cassettes that I would like listen to. Understand that I had all the cassettes. Wow. And there was a there was about three cassette uh, series that the end of the world was kind of happening in Adventures and Odyssey. And they Is were really, the really scary. Do- Dude, I remember my mom wouldn't let my little sister listen yeah. to them. Like, there were people who were, like, being electrocuted yes. and, like, faking deaths. And yes. it was the most dramatic, scary shit I had ever heard. Because Mr. Whitaker had gone overseas because the dead, something about the Dead Sea Scrolls. Oh, my God. 
wait a second, I'm covered in chills right now. Because it was talking about the Dead Sea Scrolls and he was like, we have to find the cue. He kept talking about the cue. Were they already trying to get in our brains? Stop, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm so freaked out. Slide in the DMs if you know what I'm talking about. That series was, I remember, it was fucking scary. It was scary. It was like regularly horrifying to me. <laughs> like, I, I kept me up all night and of course you know my mom was like i wasn't allowed to watch anything with like swearing but like i was listen- able to listen to these horrifying cassette tapes before bed where i couldn't sleep really where mr yeah. whitaker was getting kidnapped for, Ye- because of trying to find you know the cue, the cue. or whatever it was like a, cl- a cloth that jesus had t- it was something weird Oh, anyway, Lord. Adventures in Odyssey was good. That was a detour. <laughs> a Christian detour. Sorry for the broads who are like, what the <laughs> hell are you talking about? <laughs> if you know what we're talking about, you're like, wow, this is it. But if you don't, I apologize. I think my parents didn't restrict music because they listened to, like, uh, suggestive, like, music from the 70s and 80s. And so oh, they're like, nice. they were probably like, you know, how are we going to have that double yeah. standard when we're, tra- when we're talking about My mom just listened to her suggestive music, but didn't let me. <laughs> she let me listen to Phantom of the Opera and mm. Les Mis. Um, Starlet Express, which was a horrible detour. We listened to Mom, the Mamma Mia soundtrack on Ooh. repeat in my household. I wasn't allowed to listen to that. I put it on the other day. I was very surprised my mom let us listen to it. I put it on the other day, the album. I know... Ev- you ever have that where you put on an album and you're like, wait a second, I know every word to every yeah, single song. Yeah, it kind of makes you... Like, you're, you're like, my brain is so powerful. Seriously. It's weird how it will remember yes. everything. yes. Anyways, okay. <laughs> um, back to pop culture. Uh, oh, yeah. We have, here's a fun announcement. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but Harry and Meghan Markle, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, have signed a multi-year production deal with Netflix. So they are living Into their life. life? Okay, well, see, this is what I'm pissed about. I read this and I was like, oh my God, are we going to have... It's the, the new royalty. Kardashians are like the Duke That's and what Duchess. I just, that was immediately the my royalty. Thought. Stop it. You stop it right now. That was so good. <laughs> I didn't even mean that. My mind. <laughs> it's Wow. It's magic. so powerful. Um, no, there's, and I'm so mad about it. I read this and I was so excited. There, it says that the, uh, the two royals are producing exclusive films and series for the service. I think there's scripted series, docu-series, documentaries. What the fuck? just making a film production. So it's like the PBS for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, and they signed a two hundred and forty million dollar deal with Netflix. Well, good for them, but snooze fest for us. I know. I'm like this. Give us what we want. Give us what we want. I want give the best. The they're they're living now in um in uh, Monterey, I believe. Wow. They moved to Monterey. They moved to L. A. And Harry said, "I can't do this. I can't." And then they moved to Monterey. And they bought like a seventy million dollar house there. Whoa! Big Off little of lies. Their money alone, apparently, which I don't know how. How do you that like? Works. How, yeah, I was gonna say exactly. How do you how do you pick apart like what's your money and what's the royal money? I don't. Harry know. wouldn't have shit without his family's money, right? I don't think so. I mean, he would just be a guy named Harry. <laughs> cute, cute redhead. Ooh, a cute. He is cute. A cute redhead. What a troublemaker. What a tr. Oh my god. Yeah, I was always a Harry, not a William. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, wait, this is a big deal. Yeah. Were you, you were Team Edward, weren't you? No? You mean with Twilight? <laughs> yes. You mean over Team Jacob? Okay, am I wrong? Of course I was Dang. Team Edward. You were Team Jacob? Get out of my house. <laughs> I, listen. I'm sorry. Listen and listen here. <laughs> oh, I'll listen. First of all, we're okay, gonna put this wait, in wait the episode second. title too. Team Edward versus Team Jacob. People, ever all the stands are just like H three versus James Charles. Team Edward versus Team Jacob. Listen, did you read the books first or did you watch the movie first? Read the books first. Okay. I I loved the books. Actually, I flew through them. I flew through them as well. I was in college reading them. Okay. And it was just like, and I was like masturbating violently in my bed. Literally, <laughs> my <laughs> neighbor, my neighbor was four years younger than me and she had them and I would borrow, I borrowed the first one and I was like, give me the next one. <laughs> just give me the cr- next one. Next one. Oh my God. Yeah. So good. Um, in my opinion, the movies absolutely ruined it. Um, but 
Okay, here's the thing. L- let me look at me. I have Buffy tattoos on my body. See, I knew. Yeah, I mean, I, I am knew a, you. I am a vampire. Edward. I'm a vampire fanatic, and so for me, anything that resembles Spike from Buffy, I immediately I go. Ooh, I go. Ooh. <laughs> and I so, get Spike from Buffy, but so it wasn't that I was. I didn't like Edward so much. He's I, horrible. I didn't know. I didn't actually when I like. I don't like his actions. I just picture Spike and I go, ooh. And then I saw the movies and then I was like, not that I'm not a fan of Robert Pattinson. I think he's going to be a great Batman. Um, I, 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 I couldn't read it. I was reading it through this lens that was, I was seeing Spike. I was seeing that bleach blonde bad boy. Mm-hmm. But then when I saw Edward being like super gentle, but then always being like, Bella, why? I was like, oh, no, not so much. <laughs> Little bitch boy, <laughs> but I. But it's hard for me not to picture Spike. And I'm. But I'm also not a fan of Jacob. I love Jacob. You love Jacob. Really creepy at the end though, when he imprints upon her daughter. <laughs> that weird. shit was. I. He's made, like, it's not sexual, but I'm going to protect her until she grows up, and then I will marry her. That made me <laughs> real uncomfy. <laughs> Not, not so that. sure about that. The last books were the best, though. Yeah, they were. Like when they get, I I vividly when remember. They had sex. Oh, it is seared into my brain. Like they're they're on their island getaway, and like they're going into the water, and like yeah, it was pretty steamy. And he's breaking the bed, and then she, and he's when, like, no, I can't have sex with you. Oh god. And then when she turns into a vampire, and then they just have sex for like three weeks straight. Yeah. It's gnarly. That shit was gnarly. That was so hot, hot heat. And again, I pictured Spike the whole time. So I was just like on cloud nine living. You couldn't get me out of my bedroom. Okay, so I read the books and I just thought Edward was creepy though. Yeah, no, I understand that. I thought I thought he was creepy. And also I was like, ew, cold, pale, disgusting. That was my thing. I'm like, wolf, hot. I like my men made of marble. <laughs> I like them to be glassy. I don't want to ride a cold dick. That's, oh, but I, I actually, no. <laughs> well, I mean, good, you do what you like. No, but. I was going to say, though, like, a, but like, I like one extreme. With, I, I feel like an extreme would be nice either way. <laughs> like a really hot dick or like a really cold dick. See, I'm all about that. Hot, I was about to say hot wolf dick, and I'm like, that doesn't seem right. I am all about that lukewarm dick. <laughs> That body, t- room temperature, room temperature cock for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> tepid. Oh, tepid Anywho. penis. Well, there you go. Um, uh, so can we do one or two more quick little, little, uh, absolutely, uh, little uh, pop culture tea before absolutely. we dive into that? That is Paris Hilton because yeah. we obviously have to dive into Bobby. that. Um, before we get into that, though, stamps dot. Come, oh, broads, I would put money on the fact that you're not really looking to go to the post office these days, no matter how lovely your local post office workers may be. Sometimes you just don't want to have those hours in the day and currently standing in those lines. Well, thanks to stamps.com, stamps.com, you don't have to. That's right. What a gorgeous song. Not quite as gorgeous as Stamps.com. Stamps.com brings all the mailing and shipping services you need right to your home computer. This is the perfect way to handle every task, no matter if you're a small business sending out invoices or sending packages to loved ones in different states um, because you aren't able to be together right now for birthdays or holidays or just in general. Maybe you just need to send back some of those impulse online purchases. Hello. (sighs) Oh. so many regretful purchases, but luckily with stamps.com, they can handle it for me with ease. Simply use your computer to print out official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send it. It's that simple. Um, Plus, you'll save money with discounted rates you can't even get by going to the post office like five cents off every stamp and up to 62% off USPS services and UPS services. I mean, what? Stamps.com saves you time and money. It's kind of a no-brainer. 
I know I talked about the holidays earlier, but stamps.com will be your best friend during the holidays when you are shipping things. Most of us are not going to be able to be together for the holidays. Stamps.com is going to make it easy for you to send your grandma, your brother, your best friend, your pen pal, all those things during the holiday season. Uh, And right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in chatty. That's stamps.com and enter code chatty. Broads, did you know that it's estimated that an average adult makes 35,000 decisions a day? 35,000. Okay, ranging from should I have a fourth cup of coffee, if you're me, the answer is always yes, to what should I wear today, or to bigger things like do I want to switch my career, or in my opinion, an extremely important decision, what does family planning look like for me? If you're currently facing that decision, or you will sometime in the future, you're going to want all the information you can possibly get. Modern Fertility gives you all the tools you need to fully understand the future of your fertility. It's so simple. The whole test is done at home with a simple simple prick of your finger. After you're done, you mail in your test with the included prepaid label, and within 10 days, you'll have your personalized results. And the tests for Modern Fertility are so comprehensive, you're going to get inside into um, how many eggs you have, your hormone levels, any reproductive red flags that might pop up. I know that Becca's mentioned that one of her dear friends uh, had these uh, red flags that popped up that she had no idea about. Um, But you don't have to decipher those things on your own because you're going to have the option to talk one-on-one with the fertility nurse to review your results and even plan out your next steps, which is one of my favorite parts of modern fertility. When you're dealing with something like this, there can be nerves involved, there can be stress, You're going to want to talk to someone who's professional. So the fact that you have the option to talk to a really amazing nurse one-on-one with all of your questions is so wonderful Um, because fertility tests can be scary, uh, but with modern fertility, they make it as easy as possible. But if you're thinking of starting a family now or even someday, this is information you're going to want to know to make the best decisions for you, no matter what that decision may be. So right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash chatty. That means your test will cost $139 instead of the hundreds or thousands it could cost at a doctor's office. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash chatty. That's modernfertility.com slash chatty. So just a, like just a little bit more tea. Um, first and foremost, uh, Joe Rogan is being, I guess, talked about for the presidential debates. Which no, what, what world am I living in where there is a reality TV star who is going for his second term as president, and the guy who made people chug. Donkey, donkey semen, donkey semen, and like human spit and swim in blood is going to be the one. Not okay. Like, what? What? But I think it's because Trump is calling for him. Trump wants him to be the one. Now, yeah, I. This is gonna be wild. My dad is now listening to Joe Rogan. And I was like, so I was listening to this podcast. I mean, I think Joe Rogan. I feel like most of the world listens to Joe Rogan. I find him really annoying. I am not a Joe Rogan person. And people I've said before, I was like, well, I was listening to Joe Rogan. And people have the broads. Some broads have been like, this is problematic. I'm like, no, I understand. It's the Wait, why is it problematic? Exactly? There's just he's he. There's been some shady shit in the like. There's been stuff, and there's also I mean, stuff I'm that's sure, talked about that's just I do not agree with. Um, but no, I listen for the guests, okay? Because he gets guests. It's like you know he gets these these guests that uh, like I want to listen to an Elon Musk interview, not because I Absolutely. love Elon Musk, because I'm curious. I want to listen to Bernie Sanders Wait, on on Joe Rogan. Did we ever talk about him and Grimes' do- child's name? We did. We did. We did. Damn. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to talk about it again. Did you know he had triplets and twins already? I, I didn't know that he had any children until. Oh, this, that's right. We talked this about child. this. Okay, and then sorry. it's just like they're just, the, you know, all they care about is this like new robot baby. Ew. Apparently. They're so weird. I hate <laughs> them both. 
Okay, so you were saying Joe Rogan um, president. Yeah, that was that's just that. So prepare yourself to see that. That's going to be the this is like 20 the world is on fire. This is what's happening. Um also uh Gigi and Zane are about to have their the baby oh coming. Can we believe that like mere months ago we were talking about Tyler Cameron and Gigi and now it's Zane time really flies, doesn't it? Yes, and now and now Gigi is like I think maybe like 7 months pregnant or something. Wow. With Zane's child who zane's offspring which again bachelor nation come for me what? as far as my type zane all day every day zane's the sexiest motherfucker i've ever seen in my life is there someone that's hotter than zane like okay this is the thing though that's why i was like team jacob because i felt like i sort of picture like zane as like jacob well if we're talking that then this is gonna be if it's not <laughs> because i'm not a huge fan of the guy i forget his name taylor lautner i taylor thought he was lautner. really cute yeah he's not he's not for me so much just mm. because you know i like an older man and okay. so he was just too young looking for me mm. and even though zane is not old there is something that hasn't he has an older energy zane is like whoops so hot zane is so ridiculously attractive and all the tattoos and the I fact would be that he like left one direction because like it wasn't artistic enough for him i would be scared of being with him though because i would be afraid that the like one directioners would come for me and try yeah, to kill that would me be... or something or steal my baby the oh god <sighs> Sorry, that got a little dark. That's what Great, I'm now the One about. Direction stands are going to be after us. We are just making enemies in this episode. Enemies. <laughs> um, well, I yes, that is something I hadn't thought about. I think maybe the only person, one of the very few people that could handle that would be Gigi Kendall, m- mega famous superstars yeah. who also have their all of their own stands sure. who are going to be behind them. I don't know if like Gigi has an, an army that she talks about like what they're called i have no idea Gigi's now 36 weeks yeah. oh wow okay yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean that's just she's doing the damn thing that's just wild um zach f Eff- or excuse me we can talk about zach zach efron talk about sexy i'm obsessed <laughs> yeah him. zach okay but everyone's oh, posting so about hot. how you know zach efron is dating a waitress Yes. now and so it's like you're someone he randomly met like your dreams can come true but this is the this is the facts okay oh, she's coming. a model oh she was a model yes she's also a waitress because in la you have to have 17 jobs to survive this expensive yeah. goddamn <laughs> town so she was a model okay it's just like, like let's be real they probably met on raya they probably, she probably already had like you know 25k followers on instagram yes and he was and he here he is he's like oh she's cute and like he's like what's your insta handle looks it up sees that she's a model she already has a bunch of followers not that i think he cares about Did he that meet her in a restaurant i don't know see that's, that's what, what i'm saying that's what i'm saying they probably met on raya they probably met on raya and then people found out like oh my god she also she also works at you know whatever Some bistro she probably. works at tau in, downtown yeah, exactly. or you know whatever tau yeah. in west hollywood she's a waitress like as if she's working at denny's in arkansas yeah exactly no she's an actor she's shout a, out to my denny's waitresses in arkansas hell yeah um but you know come on give me a break it's just not i mean not to squash people's hopes and dreams but like <laughs> dream big ladies yeah yeah that's I'm, it's dumb. just it's just not it's just not how that how it seems okay no. did you watch selena gomez's cooking show i haven't Side watched note? it is it amazing horrible oh no because i love selena not, not when, when you watch this you oh, will know no. what I, she is like playing this <laughs> you're not gonna come for selena fans i am i oh man yeah you're right we're making enemies left and right it's on hbo max i think i've been watching a lot of stuff on hbo max um yeah, it's like weird. It's like she's playing dumb and she's like, I don't know how to like fry an egg. I've never cooked before. But that would be me if you put a camera but in the But this is the difference. Your energy would be like this. You'd be like, I have never cooked an egg before, so I do not know what I'm doing. Just like a heads up. And like, you'd be like, Fine. yeah, she's just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, no. And just has this like flat energy. That's just like, it's, it's like when you're in junior high and you're like, I don't want to. It's like when you're in junior high and you're like, I don't want to dissect the frog. Like, I, ew, that's gross. No, I don't want to do it. That's how she's acting about cooking. You know what's interesting I'm like, to me? you made this show. Why are you not excited? It's interesting to me because I, yeah, I'm a huge Selena Gomez fan. Mm. Her music. Watch it. Is 
great. I'm not now. I don't want to. But I'm I'm always curious about this too. Hollywood um, forces crossovers, which I don't agree with. Like, just because you're an actress doesn't mean you should necessarily always be a singer. Sometimes it works, like Selena, for instance. Fantastic. But just because you're a singer doesn't mean you should be a talk show host. Just because you're a talk show host doesn't mean that you should, you know, it's just everyone's trying to cross over everything. And I don't think just because you're famous, you should also have a podcast or have a talk show I and definitely and vice agree. versa. Definitely. Agree. You know, I understand that like it's an arty town and a lot of people, you know, were in theater. So they also sing and dance and like everyone can do everything. But that's still all performing. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, reality TV, uh, that's what I'll call her cooking show, not everyone can, no, can do that. No, because that's, that a, that's, a, that's a different type of personality. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there again, there are some different people. Different type of performance. For instance, let's talk about Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore now has a, her own show. It's a talk show. It's good. And she's amazing. Mm. She's been posting. It got delayed because of COVID. And her talk show, she's been posting on like behind the scenes stuff on Instagram from the talk shows Instagram. And there's like this scene that she posts where she's having a mental breakdown in the dressing room. Um, and she's crying and she's like, I don't feel like I'm good enough. Like this is not, what if I'm not good at interviewing people? I'm, I'm so busy. I'm exhausted. She's crying, trying on outfits and they're filming her. And you're like, this is everything because you're seeing all this behind the stage you're seeing insecurities her imposter syndrome her imposter you know, syndrome the people in the exactly world. but mm. then she goes out and she's so charming and fun you know but that's i feel like that's a that's not for everybody no i mean even look at gwyneth paltrow doing her whole goop thing I mean, she's yeah this crazy which i hate but that's a whole another conversation <laughs> oh another goop day. you're not a goop fan no we can talk about that next week yeah oh that's a good tease i want to talk Have about you watched your show no, I haven't. Watch it. Okay. Well, I like this broad homework that we've been doing. I know, doing. I like this too. Uh, hard hitting stuff. Wait, so it's the Goop on net? Is it on Netflix? Okay, yeah, I'll and watch the browser it. website. I mean, I know about Goop. I go into it with a hard heart because, you know, there are a lot of people who are not fans. Yeah, exactly. That's why I love it. Yeah, or it's the same thing. It. It's the same thing. Like, it's hard once you hear something. Like, one of my little teas here is, you know, not teas, but news is Justin Bieber starring in Drake's music video. Did you see this? So Drake put out a, a, a new song with a music video, and Drake isn't in it at all. It's Justin Bieber mouthing the words the whole time. It's kind of, I kind of like that. It's kind of hot, hot fire. Like, like not a Drake listener, but neither am I. Watching the Biebs, like, do it, and he looks so cool right now that's kind of an iconic idea it's so iconic you have to watch it it'll it's kind like, of give you chills even if you don't like either of them wait that's cool that's like if i it actually would be cool if he wasn't a musician like imagine if an artist came out with a song and the music video was kim kardashian lip -syncing. yes i kind of like that that's but it cool. was almost even wilder because it's it was justin musician. bieber and he's such such a huge and he didn't have a one line in the drake song it's just him mouthing the whole song I, I think that's cool. Yeah. I love it. And then at the end, he wakes up and he's next to, and Haley's in the video. And he wakes up next to Haley and they're like on a walk. And I want to love the love, but there's just been so much stuff that you hear that about Haley. What about? Have you not heard about this from, oh God, this is a, this is a real bad team. <laughs> Maybe I should say this. What? <laughs> One of our mutual friends has given a lot of info about working on set, and apparently it is not a fun time. And it's kind of, like, known, I think, that it's diff it's very difficult on set. There's, like, massive breakdowns and having, like, managers, managers having to come and apologize for... Oh, yeah. So now when I watch it, I'm like, I want to, like... Because I, like, you know, I love love. I love to love. But you're right. probably perfect for each other, you know. Probably. Divas, child divas. That's true. I mean, they look like something that someone drew. Who is she? Where'd she come from? Haley. Yeah, Haley's a Baldwin baby. Who are the Baldwins again? I feel I like, mean, like Alec brain Baldwin, fart. Stephen Baldwin. Oh. Like it's like it's like Hollywood royalty. Oh, I didn't even. Yeah. So I mean, she grew up like as a Baldwin, right? I feel like that kind of attitude usually comes from yeah. someone who has been entitled like all their life. Yeah.
I just was... I've heard that the Hadids are super professional. No, I'm telling you this right now because I've worked with them back in the day. Uh-huh. They are so nice uh-huh. and so kind. And on top of it, on I've heard, like, of it, timely, they're professional. They're so, you know, they, they are so gracious with, like, anyone who's coming in and out of the house. Mm. You know. Raised right. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's... it's But they're, but when I've interacted with both the, par- the sets of parents, same way. Mm-hmm. Very, very kind, um, you know, asking, like, you know, when I'd be, like, a, a shitty assistant in the background at this mm-hmm. time, I wasn't, like, running the show mm-hmm. wardrobe-wise. I'm, like, assistant, and they're still asking my name, which seems very small, but <laughs> su- surprisingly <laughs> big. Yeah. There are some there are some people that I could talk about that I'd be, like, so rude. But also, but day. also... Others where you're like, wow, like very, very kind regardless. And I, you know what the surprising thing is? Most of the time, the bigger I've had better interactions with. The more mm. famous, mm. the uh, more. Versus like kind. Bachelor stars, for instance. It's been rough, yeah. When I used to r- uh, run like wardrobe uh, at a PR firm, mm-hmm. and so like I'd run the wardrobe room, and so stylists would come in and pick the wardrobe and leave. Uh, but if you didn't have a stylist, which meant that you were not, you know, as not big enough, not big enough, you'd come in and pick the wardrobe yourself as like this quote unquote star. Mm-hmm. And those people were rough because it would be like D list below. And they were like the ones who, of course you'd have, ex- there was exceptions, but that was always embarrassing. Yeah. It was always pretty brutal. And they'd make you feel so small. And you'd just like, be like, how? And just like being rude. So rude. So demanding. Wouldn't look at you. Wouldn't engage. I have to tell you, I went to, um, oh God, I'm sorry. We're running out of time. We got to talk about Paris, but, oh, no. um, I went to the thing where I filmed like Heather DeBro's little show. Yes. And I've heard was, she's fantastic. Oh yeah. I really like her. Maybe one day we'll have her. We're supposed to do a pod swap. Maybe we'll make that happen. Um, but there was a couple people who like, you know, came with their whole manager, came with their whole person. I don't have any of that. So, you know, I just showed up by myself, just kind of like, hey, oh my God, it was so embarrassing. People kept like thinking that I was an assistant. Like, there was these two other people. It's awkward then to have to say that you're not. (laughs) Yes. And also, I was like, you know, of course, peeping everyone on Instagram. And like, I had like more followers and like more quote, I'm doing air quotes, big air quotes, fans. Yeah. yeah, Some of these people. And they're straight up like have have their makeup artist, their manager all like fussing over them. And so the person that's, you know, the backstage people are like, okay, you're going to sit here, honey. You're going to sit there. And I'm like, I'm, excuse me. I'm also, I'm, I'm one of the talent. Hello. It's so awkward because it makes you feel like you're like, I don't want to be like, I'm famous. Exactly. I'm not going to be like, I'm also a guest, but I'm like, I need, I need somewhere Dude, to sit. I'm such a fucking pushover that they'd be like, "Can you can you take the trash?" And I'd be like, "Okay, sure." <laughs> and I'm holding a boom in the background, and they're like, "Where's Jess Ambrose?" And I'm just like, "Um, I, do you want me to do this and sit?" <laughs> Look, he when I'm good in that setting, or when I'm in that setting, I'm kind of like that too. They're just like, "Honey, can you sit over there?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> They're like, all you ladies sit on the couch. And I'm just like, huh. oh, my God. But it, these other people, you know, they're just like, yes. Like, mm, how old are your kids? Mm, so cute. Mm, I, I'm just like, shut Oh, God. I hate that. I hate that behavior. That, like, I'm a trophy wife and, like, I don't do anything. And I have, like, four nannies. It's that attitude. I'm not saying that lifestyle. It's no, that attitude no, it's the attitude. Of, like, you, you know the difference. Someone can have have 15 assistants and not have that attitude. It's, yeah. it's, it, there's, a, there's a certain, it's. I did another Zoom one with Heather's show that didn't actually get released. But I was on it with, like, Larsa Pippen and a couple other women that are like her. Yes. And I was just like, I don't fit in here you know they're like oh COVID it's so hard being alone with the kids I'm like what are you talking about like I know your children are with me like I see your home in the background yes I see your three staircases in the in yes in the background meanwhile I'm like sitting in my bathroom trying to trying to hide from my family it's like oh boy yeah no it's it's it is so it's so funny when who was it Dakota Dakota Johnson just came out um, Fifty Shades, Dakota Johnson, yes. who's going to be in a movie, by the way, with Harry Styles and Chris Pine. Chris Pine is 
so sexy. I mean, Harry Styles is too. Harry Styles and Chris Pine and did, Dakota Johnson. Did you know that Chris Evans accidentally uh, put a dick pic on his Instagram story? Yes, I have that out. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> but but it acts, you know, accidentally. It was. It feels like I don't know. You don't notice uh, that shit. You have that big of a following, and you just throw that out there. Maybe not. I don't know how, but I have like. I have done a weird thing where my phone's been laying out open because I have it on the, the, the just like it's it never auto locks. And I have like accident fully accidentally uploaded pictures on my main feed before. The, oh, God. Like not like somehow touching yeah. something that is, you know, and then it's not true. noticed I for have, a few minutes because you walk yeah, away from your phone. That's true. I have posted a nude on close friends for like <gasps> half of a second. See? which I've literally like never posted on close friends before. I have it, but I've never posted on it. And that was like the one time I posted it was half of a second. And I was like, oh God, because <laughs> it wasn't a flattering nude either. It was like a mole, like a no, it was a mole check nude. Do you know what I'm saying? I was just like, I'm gonna take a photo like from behind because I had this, <laughs> what felt like a big mole. And so it was like this, like a really like <laughs> attractive mole check nude. Not the type that you want leaked. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, man. Ugh, anywho. So, uh, so, so yeah, that wealthy and famous. Oh, this was the thing, though. Dakota Johnson came out, and she was oh. did a whole... She dropped all this uh, tea about, like, people being so, so rude to assistants in Hollywood, and, like, how... She's like, it's... I loved it. Her line was, it's so boring that you're so rude to your assistant. If you're rude to your assistant, you're boring. And I'm like, that's the best way to describe that. Wow, I love that. Isn't that the tea, though? It's She's not like, wow, wow that's so rude. She's like, that's boring. That's so passe. It's so passe, and she is passe, which I love. Anyways, it is wow. boring. Be nice to your That's assistants. That's kind of like Ellen's thing. Ellen DeGeneres, which yeah. we can talk about that. We can this is like all kind of like old news, but I don't care. It's still relevant. It's still being talked about. Yeah. You know who's not really relevant, but we watched her documentary? Paris Hilton. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Okay. Broads. <sighs> this documentary... I started watching it. And First of I, all, it's a terrible documentary, I have to say. Yeah, it's not terribly it's, done. It's not. I mean, I didn't think it was that bad. The animations? Oh, the animations are really bad. I just thought it was poorly. I thought it was a poorly produced documentary. I felt like it was kind of boring and slow, even though it had interesting content. Like, I, that's I mean, what I mean when I say boring. I was, I was, lo I was locked in. Okay, I'll be honest with you. Okay, but I literally, I was, I was two minutes into the documentary and I texted Becca and I'm like, Becca, you need to watch this. And I watched it that night. And it just, it just blew my mind because it's just not what I was expecting. No. So yeah, please. Well, okay. First of all, I have to say this is the kind this. <laughs> This is the part where I was kind of like, oh, cringe. It was like 20 or 30 minutes basically like talking about how famous she is. But she is still very famous. Don't get me wrong. But I think it was important to to have those moments because okay. I think be because she's not in like talked about as much now, we forget that especially overseas, she's gigantic like with all of her DJing stuff. Mm. So... Yeah, I think maybe true. in the U.S. we don't talk about her so much, but I think she is. That's why she's, like, always traveling overseas. I yeah. Think. So, I guess, um, in summary, it's about, like, her being famous, about her, kind of, like, her family and what all the drama that came out when she was younger. And then there's, like, this big thing that happened to her. So, one thing that I thought was really crazy was the story about her sex tape being leaked. That was wild to watch so basically you know since with the whole kim k thing even though they said that that was like an accident that one being leaked or whatever paris hilton makes it very clear that that was not on purpose that she was coerced in her words um i think she said like digitally raped she felt like she was coerced into having sex on camera she didn't want to do it i think she said that was the first person she's ever had sex with mm -hmm. right i believe she said that and um and then her boyfriend, her ex, uh, that ex boyfriend leaked the tape, and it was humiliating. Mm -hmm. And so it was like not only a bad memory for her, it was then everyone was watching it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, she was like, you know, it became a blueprint for other people to get famous, even though it was like to me very much not a joke and very horrible. And then when Nikki was talking about how. Uh, they lived in a like they lived in a hotel because they're the Hiltons, and that how every morning the hotel 
got like the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times, or whatever. And and Nikki would run out every morning and see what the headline was and like flip them over and so. flip them over or like steal the newspapers or whatever because she didn't want it to be about Paris on the front because then everyone was like living on the same hall as her family like that's so and I mean yeah and you know Gray was like this could have been cut and taken out of context but there's clips of her mom being like. I I couldn't get out of bed for weeks. And you're kind of like, okay, this is about you. Like, you sort of get the sense, or the way it's painted in the documentary, is that the parents are kind of more concerned with their image maybe than the well-being of their children. Well, you know what I was thinking when I was watching it? Because then we find out, you know, skipping ahead, uh, when Paris is talking to her parents about what we'll talk about in a second and telling her mom about all these things that had happened to her. If you watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, um, you know Kyle is sisters with Kathy Hilton, and there is always family drama going on. Um, Kyle is always, at one point in every season, is kind of like, yeah, no, Kathy and I are talking right now, and there's always drama, and Kyle was even in the documentary, um, and Kyle has is always really close with Nikki and Paris, and they're always like in almost every single season of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and they're like, "Was like Aunt Kyle, Aunt Kyle," and I'm, and I know Kathy was really angry when Kyle came out with um, with the her her uh, show that's like based off of Kathy and Kyle's mom and Kim's mom, um, and you wonder. I mean, is Kyle maybe a safe place for Paris and Nikki? And Kathy might be very much, you know, again, we're, like you said, worried about what the outside she perception like. is. Yeah. And maybe, you know, the other sisters, not quite as much. And they're, you know, maybe more family oriented. I don't know. But it's very obvious. There's some bizarre elements of this documentary besides this uh, this traumatizing these th- traumatizing things that happened to her that we'll, that we're about to go into there's some bizarre elements like you see into her house and she seems like she's a little bit of a hoarder like you're yeah. seeing all this jewelry that's like very obviously from like 2006 2007 2008 and just kind of like piles of stuff falling off the shelves mm-hmm. in her closet mm-hmm. it's very kind of bizarre yeah her house is like packed with stuff yeah nice stuff but stuff but also like really yeah really dated stuff too mm-hmm. and even you can see on the shelves like random little like keychains and weird things mm-hmm. um yeah that was bizarre and then also like there's this scene where she's djing at uh Lollapalooza. oh my god dude this is crazy i could not believe she has this new boyfriend and I'm pulling up her insta her instagram is bizarre as well yeah I don't know if you've been on it. Yes. Her social media strategist is like a 50 year old man. And I'm like, it's probably not. Yeah. No. Smart. No. Um, but she's a DJ in Lollapalooza, which is like one of the biggest EDM events in the world. And her boyfriend is there and they get into this altercation of sorts where they're fighting. And she's like, just get away. Okay. They, they both looked, they were both fucked up. Yeah, like I they mean, looked like they had just done several lines in the bathroom and then he, came out and started fighting. Yeah, I mean, he definitely was just completely out of it. Oh yeah, he's like following her. But bumping he, into her. he, she. I mean, it was. I was surprised that she put that in the documentary. Agreed. It wasn't flattering. It wasn't. No, it was very real, and I appreciated that. But, I mean, he is... She was like, take away his wristband. Get him out of here. She's like, cut his wristband off. And then afterwards, she's like, there's nothing meaner than cutting off someone's <laughs> artist's wristband at a music, uh, <laughs> at a music festival. <laughs> at a festival. I was dying. I literally, I want to put that on a shirt. That's so legend. But <laughs> it was intense. Yeah. It was extremely intense. And this all comes after her saying that, you know, she doesn't trust anyone that she's really with. You see her, like, stacks of computers that have names and dates on them because she has to get a new computer every time she breaks up with someone so that they don't break into, like, new hard drive stuff. She has set, sets up cameras in her house because of boyfriends, like, getting into things. Yeah, she reveals later in the documentary that she's had basically, like, five physically abusive boyfriends and she's had boyfriends who have thrown laptops at her, like, stolen her stuff, all this crazy shit. You also hear vo- a voice difference. So you hear... 
you hear, you know, you're used to like Paris Hilton. That's hot. That's hot. Like, yeah. you know, oh, yeah, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> that was really good. But she always talks like this. Like, it's always so, like, like a little high But voice. her voice is really more like this. Like she's She just... actually kind of has a little bit of, like, a husky lower voice. Yeah. Which I love I her like real, her real voice. voice a lot better. Yeah. Uh, it's just very sexy voice. I'm like, just go with that one. Um, it's interesting, right, that... Um, why can't I think of her name? Nicole Rich. And Nicole Richie wasn't in that documentary at all. Mm-hmm. Even though they're showing clips from The Simple Life. Mm-hmm. I'm interested. Why not? Me too. I mean, Kim, even Kim, Kim K and was Chris in it. both have cameos, and Kimmy K was literally like interviewed for it. Yeah, they were even hanging out the other day. I saw. Yeah. Uh. But there's so <sighs> there's so many layers to this because, um, you know what's so funny is like right before you came, I saw on YouTube there was a bunch of uh. Psychi- like psychologists and psychiatrists and therapists breaking down the documentary and I want to watch all those on YouTube. Um, but there is so much because you see clips of Paris saying, I will not... Like, she... The, the woman does not stop. Like, you hear her that she hasn't taken a vacation in, like, 15 years. years. Yeah. She travels, like, 320 days of the year. She's burnt out. She's yeah. nonstop. You see her trying to sleep. She has to sleep with, like, sleep. I mean, she she's... It's... She can't sleep then because she has these night terrors. And she's just broken down. Like, the girl is broken down. Um, but she says, I can't sleep until I'm a billionaire. And then someone, like, whoever's filming is like, well, what about, like, you said that about $100 million. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, now I can't sleep until I'm a billionaire. And so it's clearly there's this never-ending pursuit pursuit of, like, fulfillment and Mm -hmm. satisfaction um, and success. But I think more than anything, she's searching to, like, fulfill some purpose and fill some void. It's a very, like, cliche thing to say, but it's very obviously true in this documentary. It's so... Interesting, because I was reading, uh, I, you know, I read like a little on Twitter or something on Instagram where, you know, someone said, you're closer to um, being like unhoused than you are to being a billionaire or yeah. something like that. Like, no matter where you are, like someone like Paris Hilton is so wealthy, like w- there we can't, you can't even begin to process it because we're so far from that. And she grew up in that insane level of wealth. Mm-hmm. And you wonder, like, what... It, I mean, the, the level of psychological damage, especially because there's no one like you. Yeah. Like, the percentage oh. of people in this world, like, 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 friends, playmates when you're younger, partners. Like, there's no... There, the, um, the percentage of people who can compare to you or, like, relate to you is so small. And it sounds so like, oh, my God, poor thing. Because mm-hmm. but that's... It's just psychologically, like, how does that even... How do you handle something I said like to that? Gray while we were watching it, I go, she knows nothing... She wants nothing more than to just be able to, like, meet someone, have kids, and be able to shop at the supermarket and go to, like, a mommy and me group mm-hmm. with random people. It's like, that's... You can tell that's what she wants. She just wants to be a happy, normal person and, Mm -hmm. like, get to have a normal life and not feel like people are always trying to use something or need something from her. Like I feel like she just wants to rest. Mm -hmm. And I want to just be, like, sleep. Just, like... But she can't because, turns out, when she was a partying teenager, uh, and and Gray kept saying, like, this is really one-sided. Like, what was she doing? So so her parents shipped her off to these various behavioral camps or schools, which we'll get more into. Yeah. But Gray was like, okay, you have to, like, what was she doing? Was she a 16-year-old up in the club, like, doing ecstasy every night? Like, that seems like that's very realistic. And at a certain point, parents feel like they don't have any other option. Because I was just like, her parents are pieces of shit who don't really care about yeah. her. And he's like, you got to understand, like, what was going on. She was literally in the New York party scene as, like, a young yeah. teenager. Yeah. Getting in with some people that are not. It, it made me think of, um, like, Alexis Haynes that we had on. And kind of the, sh- the shit that she was getting into as, like, a 15-year-old. But, but this is my thing. This is my thing, right? What? Your kid's doing that. Guess what, Kathy? 
<laughs> you stay in every, and it sucks as a parent. You stay in every night and you sit and you stay in your kid's room every single night to make sure that they don't go out. Like, yeah, to I me, guess. shipping someone off that you've never been to, like, it, like you're going, you're getting someone kidnapping your kid in the middle of the night. Okay, this is, okay, yeah, th- things get fucking extreme. Like, I understand having to, like, like there are certain times, there's certain measures. It's like, it, like you said with Alexis Haynes, right? Yeah. You're having to go to different rehabs 100%. 100%. Well, I'm just saying, I think parents sometimes feel so out of yeah, control of where, like, even if she was to go sit in her room, sometimes there's shit with teenagers where it's like a teenager, this sounds dramatic, but it's a thing where, like, a teenager will literally, like, be like, I'm leaving. Yeah, no, you you're know? right. And I speak out of turn because I don't have a kid who's older. Um, and well, I have never also, been in that situation. Also, you I were- think it's because she so seems like she would be like, I'm like, the Hiltons have an event they have to go to. Sure. So she's leaving and someone's staying at the house to watch Paris sure. and she's not. That's just the energy I get. So well, I get all like, Ooh. I was going to say, you also, though, were raised with structure. And so, yeah, I mean, you look at Kim and Kyle, like there's issues in the family, it's obviously. It's like if you didn't have any kind of boundaries or structure when you were a child, sometimes people are just completely you know up a creek without a paddle when it comes to parenting their own kids and have yeah. no idea how to set boundaries yeah. um that being said not trying to excuse what happened to her that being said her parents sent her to these crazy ass abusive schools like She's gone to some wilderness camp, which in, incidentally, Gray actually went with one of his friends, got sent away for a semester to like one of these wilderness survival camps that's really? supposed to be like character building. Oh my God. Yeah. Although he said it was fun. They just had to like sleep outside and he said it was gnarly, but it was like in the Pacific Northwest. And anyway, if you don't know about these, they're basically di- diff- varying degrees, but of alternative options for troubled children or kids with issues getting into trouble and their parents don't know what to do with them. Um, some of the ones that Paris got sent though, sent to though were extremely abusive, particularly this one out of Provo, Utah called Provo Canyon school. It was, they kidnapped Paris in the middle of the night. That was, cr- that, I was saying this to Gray too though. I was like, imagine being a parent. They literally come and took, came and took her out of her bed. Random people. She thought she was being kidnapped was screaming like what's happening and to me parents and her parents were like, just standing there in the hallway. Mm-mm. Well, you know, and I I've heard of this happening with I've you know, I've I've watched this I don't know, I have to come up come with the link. I've watched a documentary about a camp that was like this. Have you? About oh. and then every kid always talks about what was so traumatizing was how they take them in the middle of the night. Jesus. And it's like how is a parent so then, so then she goes to this camp, Jesus. and oh my God. and it is. I mean, it's abusive. It's emotionally abusive. They she's get physically abusive. In, she's put in solitary confinement, naked. They're forced to like be naked in front of guards, like verbally assaulted. You know, like physically, physically said that assaulted. She was hit it, like numerous times. Yeah, she said that she and one girl got in trouble, and they beat the shit out of them in yes. front of everyone. Yes. And so that the at the end of this documentary. Paris um, gets in contact with some of her campmates and they uh, she's able to well, sit down. Mates, they were there for she was there for 11 months. Yeah, that's wild. That's it was so a boarding long. school. It was yeah. a boarding school. So she's able to sit down with them and, you know, they were going through what Provo did to all of them and how it's affected them. And all of them are extremely damaged because of this school. And so now they're, you know, trying to fight against this. Um, and it was so interesting to hear her, to hear her, uh, schoolmates being like, it was so weird to watch you on the simple, like life acting like you didn't know how to clean because we watched you clean and mop every single day. Yeah. I'm sure they were like scrubbing out toilets with toothbrushes. So Paris absolutely knew. And this is just, this was just, you know, a part that she's playing. Um, but I couldn't, I mean, I I truly couldn't believe it. And I'm going to link the Instagram for um, them fighting against Provo because I don't have it. I was, that's what I was looking for. I'm going to link it in the episode notes so you all can check it out and, like, support it because, I mean, the, the, this it there's, needs to end. They're, like, like, severely traumatized, all of them, from this experience. Oh, severely. Like, and those are only... The, those are the people who are willing to have their faces shown in the documentary. Like, the, the, the amount of kids who have gone through this, there's tons. And now, the biggest part to me, which was the most troubling, is that Paris was saying that... Um, the 
they're now like uh, accepting eight year olds there. And so it's like, first of all, what, what type of eight? Yeah. I, I can't. I know. I know. You're like, what, who needs to send their eight year old to a reform school? It's just like, it's unreal. Maybe like invest some time in like some therapy for your child oh or like God. something. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're expensive as shit. Oh, of too. course. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. That's the thing. It's I'm like, sure. I think she said her parents are paying like $30,000 a year or something for this. Like so maybe you s- more. Yeah. So you see Paris telling her mom for the first time what they did to her. And they, I mean, it was so abusive. You know, they're telling them, like, if you tell your parents what's going on kind of thing. Yeah. We're going to do so this Kathy to you. So Kathy says they had no idea. But but my, I understand, like, being like, I don't know how to take care of my kid at this point. But when you see, like you said, your kid kidnapped screaming and that's how the whole thing starts. I'm like, I don't care if I wasn't, like, you know that something would be going on in my mind. So right. when Kathy's like, I had no idea that they were like verbally abusing you or like, you know, especially like phys- it's like, OK, yeah, but but you saw how it started. Right. So. I was, guess maybe your thought as a parent is, is like my kid would tell me if they're being tortured. Like my 17 year old's yeah. going to tell me if they're being tortured, I guess. I guess. I mean, I, I'm just playing the other side to try to understand the perspective. But I mean, it it was crazy. I, I was, I mean, I was shocked again because I was expecting to turn on a, I was expecting to turn on a uh, Paris Hilton documentary and see like tons of like Louboutins and diamonds and be like, well, you know, I haven't been able to find a relationship because it's really hard to be this rich. Like, that's what I thought it was going to be. No, and, so and she's I was like, I can't shocked. trust anyone and I'm so severely traumatized that I continue to be with people who are abusive mm-hmm. and I'm, I can't, yeah. Have PTSD. And, then, and then what was interesting afterwards, and then we've got to wrap because we have Rob Bell and his son coming, which will be out Thursday. Um, but what was so interesting to me afterwards, B, is that I went when I went on her Instagram, she had like um uh, uh a night where she premiered her the documentary. And it was just like super like Parisy where it's diamonds everywhere, and there was like the taking photos in front of it. And it was all very, like, glitz and glam. And I didn't see, like, posts about Provo. I don't think she knows how to be, like... And, but that made my heart, like, that's what made my heart ache the most. Is that it was, like, you're, you're talking, your main, the main part of this documentary is about, like you said, how she is now, like, traumatized, she's paranoid, Provo, all this. And yeah. you can't, like, and then your Instagram doesn't really show any of that. In fact... She didn't even, I looked, um, and there was a photo that she took with, you know, she had duct tape over her mouth and she was holding up a sign about Provo and showed what Provo did to her. And the other people who came, her classmates did that as well. And on their Instagram, they posted their photos, but I didn't see Paris's. Hmm. So to me, it's like you said, it's like she doesn't know then how to turn it off. You wonder too, cause like she has these social media strategists and stuff. And it's like uh, who are people pushing being her. like, don't talk about, I don't know. It's weird. And I was so, I, I, I just, if it wouldn't have been for one of the broads sliding into my DMs saying like, this is horrific. You need to watch Paris Hilton's like, documentary. If I went on her Instagram, I wouldn't have known that there was anything. No, she like posts about the documentary, but doesn't even. But it looks like glamorous. Yeah. And she also just says random things like, you know, like, Yeah. This is the real me, but she doesn't mm-hmm. actually, she's not actually talking about anything on her Instagram. No, and it's like she has like Tana, really weird. they're like taking cute like selfies outside, like, and it, it, it was a very heavy documentary and it was just so strange to see huh. that, like, yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways, uh, that was a heavy way to end. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I know it was like we're just like James Charles, Harry Styles, Zane, woo! There's just like Paris Hilton. But I definitely will be linking in the episode notes um, about what's going on. It's something that you know I think is like super important that needs to get um, a spotlight shown on it and talked about. And this documentary made way for that, but then there wasn't. It didn't yeah. seem to be lots of follow up via social media. So no. it's definitely something that needs to be discussed. But. Yeah. Anywho, um, real heavy, but... And with that, uh, Chad soon brought... <laughs>
<laughs> but no, we, but actually, we have to go. So we do have to go. We love you all. Please remember to vote for us. Oh yes, in the E Pop culture podcast choice awards yay 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 yay. um and yes tune in thursday rob bell is back he has a new book that's out that's so good and his son is actually going to be joining us and we're going to have have some like really great conversations with the both of them that i'm so excited also um you know feel free as ever to message us or comment on our post about what you want us to talk about next week next week yes send us the pop culture tea these days broads i've definitely gotten some help from some of you so i appreciate you all greatly and we love you and uh chat soon chat soon